the same st streams as the theme of the day, which is pretty good because streams are awesome. Uh, yeah, welcome to my talk. Um, I'm Matthias. Uh, I go by Mavintosh on uh, on the socials. Um, hit me up if you want to talk. Also, talk to me out here in person. It's cool. Um, yeah, I uh, I come from Copenhagen, Denmark. Um, I do a lot of peer-to-peer -peer development. Uh, I have a, co a couple companies around that. If you're interested in that, come talk also. Uh, then I, like mentioned, I do uh, varying degrees of node core contributions. Sometimes I do a lot, sometimes I don't do anything. Depends on my mood. Node core is awesome though. Uh, and then uh, I'm very invested and uh, care a lot about streams and node, um, which is what I'm going to talk to to a little bit about today. But in a, a little bit different way maybe than the other talks. Um, <coughs> basically, the talk is called Whack-A-Mole. If you don't know what Whack-A-Mole is, it's basically this game where you know you have something coming up, and you keep knocking it down, and something comes up. Uh, because uh, if you've done a lot of streams development, as I do, that's kind of what it feels like sometimes. You're like fixing this issue, but then this other issue comes up, and you just you know you run out of hands really fast. Um, so basically, this talk is going to be a, a depressing story about why you probably all have stream implementations and probably, they probably all have a ton of bugs that you don't know about, um, that I know about. So <laughs> that's it's super sad. Now would be a good time to go if you're like, you want to ignorance is bliss. So um, just a brief, I don't know if the previous talks went over this, but just a brief history of, of Node.js streams. I won't bore you too much about this. Also, just keep a track on time. Yeah. So basically, uh, I was around in Node since 0 0.2. So uh, I was around back like this. Uh, streams were implemented basically first in, uh, uh, back then. We just called them streams. They call, didn't call them streams, uh, streams run. They were officially added in 0 0.6. Uh, they're basically uh, like do-it-yourself streams. It was like, just do all the work. Um, they kind of look like this where you require a stream package and you can make one, but it, the only thing that did was give you a pipe method. Uh, but and if you wanted to uh, return data from your, your streams, you would just emit that as a data event. So it's kind of like YOLO streams, just like go do it. And back then, people were like making all these cool stream projects, but you know we kept messing it up because you know it was hard. Uh, and you know to consume them, you would just listen for this data event. So it's kind of like this this convention. Uh, and then if you got too many data events, you would try to call this pause method that we kind of decided on, but it was not really standard, so you would always like make this if sentence, like if it's there, call it, uh, like let's hope they added it, otherwise, YOLO. Um, <laughs> so that was really cool because it was super simple. Uh, uh, it was, it was, it's this technical term uh, push-based because basically data is, is pushed to you through this data event. It's like, here's a bunch of data, and you're like, uh, it's kind of like somebody pushing you in a queue. Uh, but it was it was really hard because you had like I said had to implement everything yourself, um, so everybody got it wrong. Um, so there was an attempt to fix this in a in a big rewrite called Streams 2. That was uh, added. That was this was back then when you know the time between the zero point something releases of Node was like years. So like 0 0.6 was years before 0 0.10. It's not like today where you know every day we we get a new streamer out. Uh, so very, it was a very different time back then. Uh, so this years later, we decided to do something about it, or a couple of core people did, something called Streams 2. Uh, basically, a bunch of new objects were added to the stream class, uh, like the, uh, you know today, and you saw in the previous talk, this readable thing, for example. And it was a proper abstract class, if you're familiar with that term, so it had a lot of functionality. And now you wouldn't emit your own data events, you would implement this underscore read method, and that was kind of like the signal that you should, you should call something, and then you would call this push method to push data to it. Very different. Uh, and to consume it, the idea was you would have this readable event and then the synchronous read function that would just read data from the buffer and you would do this kind of like loop. It was, kind of, it was very inspired by Java, actually. Um, so it was complex, much more complex, but I mean, not, not in a necessarily a bad way. Streams are complex. Uh, it kind of had this like batteries included kind of feel where you know, it came with all the functionality, you just had to put in the parts you needed. Uh, again, pretty well. Uh, and it's pull based because you know, we're pulling data out of it instead using that read method. So that was the big difference. Um, and then finally, we got something called Streams 3, uh, which is basically the streams we have today. And they were added a little bit later, because people got a little bit confused uh, about Streams 2 with this new interface. So basically, Streams 3 just added a little bit of interrupt that made uh, these data events still work uh, together with the read stuff. So that's basically where we are today. Uh, how many in here ever used Streams in Node? 
how many in here has ever implemented that stream? Yeah, cool. All right. So you know, it's it's one of the uh, more used things. So uh, people don't know this. People kind of a lot of people think the streams just stopped at stream stream. Actually, there's a streams working group, and we're working on it. Uh, Matteo is here, who does a lot of the work. Uh, I do some of the work. At least I take credit for some of the work, uh, which is nice. Uh, but you know, we, we we keep fixing issues and iterating streams in, in core. Uh, basically, we know this because every time me and Matteo fix a bug. Uh, we get a lot of people yelling at us because a lot of people are relying on, on these bugs, uh, which is the point I'm getting at. Um, so that's really fun. It's a very, it's, 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 it's the hero we need, basically the Batman of Node.js. Um, this is like, you know, this is not an accident because basically if you look at Node.js, Node.js core is really simple. Like most of it is like file descriptors and like stuff like that. The only really complex thing returned from Node.js core is streams. You know, streams has tens of methods, right? And a lot of functionality, huge stage machine. Everything else in Node core is very compressed down, even like the process uh, objects and the um, uh, child process things are very small compared to streams. So they have a lot of surface. So no wonder there's a lot of things to cover. Um, so I'm just going to dive into it, and I'm going to show you some examples, and yeah, I'm going to tell if anybody can spot, the, spot the, the box. Can anybody tell me what's wrong with this? So I'm making a stream, uh, and uh, I'm basically just destroying it. Right, it's, it's meant to, it's, they're meant to be tricky and deceiving. So basically, if you run this code, which is uh, making a stream and destroying it, this will fail on node 6, because there's no destroy method, because I was added in node 6, even though it's stream free. If you run it in, uh, in uh, node 8, this will call something called push null, which basically means it will emit end. And if you run it in node 10, it will emit close. So it's really hard, uh, because that means that your module will just do very different things depending on what node your version you're using, even when you're on the later versions of node. So if you're implementing your own streams, something to be aware of, like the stream is not a stream. It's, it depends on what is given to you. To solve this, uh, we made the most confusingly named package on NPM. Uh, it's called readable stream, but it actually also contains writable streams. Uh, it's basically just a mirror of node streams uh, that you can require from NPM, and then you can version it. Um, it basically means that you can just re replace stream with readable stream, and then when you make readable stream, you get an object back that per behaves like you expected on all node versions. So. So much easier. If you're writing your own node module uh, that uses streams, uh, I'm just going to give a lot of like absolute advice here. Just always use readable stream. To make your life easier, you get have fewer bugs. Um, think your thing will probably work. Um, so that's cool. I'm just moving on. Here's another one. We had an example before for somebody making uh, file streams. Can anybody see, spot the bug in this one? I'm making a, st a stream. Uh, let us assume I have a, f a file called fineM.txt, uh, and then when you know when the stream is done, uh, I want to do something. And this is actually a bug I get a ton on my reports where people get very confused. So basically, the bug here is that end will never fire uh, because the stream is never drained. And this is the comment I always write on GitHub. And people are like, "What the fuck is drained? I don't know what that means." That's just this word we made up to mean different things. So basically, when you have a stream, because they're pull streams now, you got to take the data out of it. If you don't take the data out of it, the stream is like in this weird state where it has data, but it's not going to move. So you have to, uh, it's basically a memory leak, because uh, you won't know about it. It's, well, it's not going to error. It's not going to do anything. It'll just sit there, consume resources. Uh, so always drain your streams. You can do that by calling resume. They'll like just take the data out of it as fast as it can, uh, which is pretty neat. Another way is to do this writable, readable ma magic, where you like uh, make a readable handler, and then uh, take the data out of it that way. That's another way to drain it. You can pipe it somewhere. We had that in the previous talk. So if you pipe it, that's the same as draining it, because it takes the data and puts it into this other one. This has a bunch of other problems. We'll get to those. It's gonna be uh, gonna be good, and then uh, the last one, which is my absolute favorite, is you can add a data listener. So I work with streams so many times that I, I know what happens, but it's really confusing because if you look at this code and you're just used to Node.js, you're like, I'm attaching a, a, an event handler. It doesn't do anything. It's an event handler. Well, it streams, 
and we added a bunch of magic. Uh, so in streams, if you add a data handler, it has magic behavior. And uh, <coughs> basically, it calls uh, resume in the background. And that's because back in you know streams one days, it was all this data event stuff. So when we added it in streams two, we kind of wanted you know our code to still work because again we had that problem of when you require a stream, we don't know what you get. Uh, so the added a bit of magic here and it kind of made it work. Um, so basically, always drain your stream. This one is great. I love this one. Does anybody know what the end handler means in streams? So this is where actually, um, in, I think, because I've, based on my GitHub experience, uh, I have a lot of repos on GitHub and I have a lot of streams ones. And I think this is where I've seen most English speaking, uh, native English speakers get very confused by this because I just read it as co code and I think a lot of English speakers read it as actual end. There's all these very confusingly named events and streams that don't mean anything, they're just words. So you just gotta treat them as words. End being one of them. So end doesn't mean end. End means the readable side of the stream has successfully completed and it's done. Um, emphasis on success here. That's what end means in streams. So if you have code like this, and I see a lot of code like this, where you're like, oh, I have some web server, I get a web socket in, it's a stream maybe, uh, I'm gonna drain it because I just heard about draining the streams, so that's pretty smart. Uh, but then like, uh, I'm gonna, uh, you know, I wanna track how many users online, so I'm gonna increment a variable, and then when it's done, I'm gonna decrement it. Well, that's a huge bug here, right? Because based on what I just said, end only fires when uh, unsuccessful, and we're on the internet usually, right? So success can mean a lot of things. People are on phones and stuff like that. Uh, we have bugs. So basically, this is this is like, this never, it might never fire. It might fire, it might never fire. So you probably, it's probably good for your user stats, right? Your stats are just always going high, a little bit higher. Uh, so maybe you don't want to fix that one, but um, but yeah. <coughs> so, 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 so wait, how do we fix it? Well, it's pretty easy because there's only these four events we need to worry about that are all kind of named the same. So it's basically streams can, can end, and here I mean end as an end, not end as in streams end, uh, with either a close event, error event, finish event, and or an end event, or any combination of these. Um, these are all like the terminal state of the streams state machine. Um, so, so how do we fix it? <coughs> it's pretty easy, we just add a bunch of code. And this is great, this is where people, every time I help people fix it, they're like, oh Jesus. Because it's like, you, you know, you have to handle all these, but then they can also, you know, like I said, any subset of them can fire. So you have to add this once variable where you set this so you, because you don't want to decrement it too many times. That's the next block you do. Uh, and, and, and like you cannot use once because then you got to unremove them. It's just a whole, it's a, so hard. Uh, and I'm sure Matteo uh, could come up here and tell me that this is also wrong because even if end fires, you probably want to wait for close and some points and stuff like that. So I had this problem uh, like f f uh, some years ago I kept writing this code, and it's, it's really hard to get right, especially when you add in all different uh, uh, streams versions out there. <coughs> oh yeah, sorry, uh, one thing, I forgot this. So you might notice that finish, finish event here. Uh, finish is, is, is super confusing, that's one of my favorite. So finish doesn't mean finish, obviously, it means that the writable side has succeeded, and it's, it's done. That's what finish means, uh, because we needed more words that sound like end, uh, but end was used. Um, so this is the best part, what triggers finish, stream.end triggers finish, because, uh, you know, we, we're all consultants, we gotta get paid, so, <laughs> uh, um, so you got this very nice, you know, state machine of stream push null triggers an end, and stream end triggers a finish. Uh, <coughs> so when you're looking through this and you're looking, you're like, geez, what? you're like, what, what happened, right? Like, are we just, is this just, are we just bad programmers? Are we just trying to make everybody's life hard? Uh, well, no, backwards compared. This is like, open any issue on streams and I, uh, Matteo and me will come in and be like, yeah, backwards compared. Like, sorry, like, yeah, can't, can't help you. Again, we'll fix one thing, we break 8,000 things. Um, it's just, it's just really, really hard. Um, so, <coughs> I kept running into this, so I decided to write a module about it. 
uh, to fix it. So there's this module called end of stream, end as an end. Um, it's pretty old. Uh, so that's a module that literally just gives you a callback. And then you can promiseify if you want. Um, <coughs> that behaves like you think. And I love this module because every time I try to push this module on somebody, um, you know, it's the same story every time. Somebody's like, I'm waiting for the stream to end. I'm like, use end of stream. They're like, yeah, you know what? I read the documentation. I'm just going to do it myself. I don't need a module. I'm like, use the module. And then they're like, yeah, OK, OK. But actually, I wrote my own little module. I'm like, use this module. And then I'm like, go read it. You know, and you think it's like a little, you know, five lines of code. It's like, this is like 100 lines of code. Because there's so many states. Yeah, so just use this module. <coughs> In fact, this is so useful that we, we added it to uh, Streams Core now uh, as, a, as a core thing. So it's called Finish there. <laughs> finished as in finished, uh, not as in stream finish. Um, so just use that one. It's in, it's in uh, all new, newer versions of stream. If you're on the latest node or if you're using readable stream, the latest one is there and there. Very useful. Uh, GitHub recently pushed this, like, uh, you can see how many people use your stuff. Uh, so this one is great. This is this is what I love about open source. Sometimes people are like we should only fund things that have like you know tons of stars. This module has 160 stars or something. No, 120 stars, and it's used by 1.6 million repos online. Uh, and I haven't touched it in in a year because it's it's stable basically. So like this is this is this is I wrote this so it feels wrong to say it, but it's great stuff. You should use it. All right, this is like. This is like the classic example of something that's wrong. That's just why I got into streams uh, tooling, basically. Can anybody spot what's wrong here? Anybody have any ideas? This is like very innocent. This is used to be like the example on the Node.js website, I think. Basically, uh, this has a huge memory leak. Um, if the response... Uh, HTTP response here closes, as in like you know the connection is terminated before uh, uh, non gracefully, like the, the power is out or something like that. This will memory leak uh, because people don't realize that uh, pipe doesn't do any error handling. <coughs> so basically, to fix this, you gotta do your own roll your own error handling. Uh, and you can imagine this if you didn't use the finish module. This is uh, you know we couldn't fit it on the slide. Uh, so basically, you gotta make your streams, and then you gotta hook them up and be like, if one of them errors, destroy the other one, vice versa. And then we can pipe, then it's safe to pipe, because that means that uh, if the uh, response closes, uh, the file will be closed, because the file stream has, you know, resources behind the scenes. It opens the file descriptor and stuff like that. So you gotta destroy it. You can't just have it dangling. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bad time. You're gonna run out of resources. This is where I work with a lot of people that just restarts their Node.js servers once in a while because that's another way to fix this. Um, because again, you don't re you don't realize you have these problems. <coughs> so uh, this is my very simple advice: never use pipe. It's a huge foot gun. It looks very nice, but it's incredibly hard to get right. There's even nuances here that is wrong. That I'm not going to cover. Uh, so to fix that, I wrote a, a module called Pump. Uh, that is just like pipe, but you can just pass in the, or have a syntax error, but it doesn't matter. Just use that one instead. So this one does like error handling, uh, shuts down the streams if one of them fails, and also has a little uh, callback at the end, so you can um, so you can actually check when the pipe is done, because that's also very non-trivial. Um, like, how do you even check if a pipeline is done? Does anybody know? Like, which event do you listen for? Is it end, finish, close, or error? It's actually finish on the end one you have to listen for while error handling. Uh, fun fact. But Pump does all this stuff for you. Um, and again, this one is so nice that we added it to, to streams. Um, I called it Pump because we used to have a thing in Node Core back in 0 0.2 called SysPump. That was the one you used to pipe things together. Uh, so I called it Pump. But we called it Pipeline in Node Core because that's way cooler. Pipeline is like the, probably the best English word there is, if you ask me. Uh, so now you can get pumped from there. Uh, you don't have to use the module, which is pretty nice. Um, <coughs> again, you know, just to assure you, it's not just me uh, telling you this stuff. Like, uh, there's a lot of people using it. Uh, you should use, and people don't realize they use it because all the modules use it. So you probably want to use it also. Uh, <coughs> I'm sure Matera will tell you the stats on readable stream later. I think that's the most downloaded module on NPM, or at least close to. Um, all right. 
going a little bit faster, but it's fine. We don't have to spend too much time on all my stuff. This one is actually, this is uh, one of the last ones. If not the last one, I have some other things though. But um, this one is interesting. This is actually from a, I helped a very competent friend of mine implement a streams thing the other day, and um, he got so frustrated at the end. He was like, I'm not touching streams ever again. Um, <laughs> so he basically had some code like this. He was like right, implementing this protocol, you know, where you're like, oh, I have this protocol. It's like over the wire, so it's like a bunch of parsing. He, he's, he's smart. He can do all the parsing. And then, you know, when the data comes in, he implemented it as a writable stream because, you know, that's how you get data in. Then you're writable. It's a little bit confusing, but that's how it is. So when the data come in, he had this state machine where he would like you know, look at the data, and the f first message is if they looked like something, it would be a handshake. And then he would emit, th emit that handshake as an event, so the user could like uh, do something with it, right? Like, oh, there's a handshake, then I can check. Uh, and then afterwards, because you know the, the data might be bigger than the handshake, because there's more than one the data. After the handshake, he would do then you know do something with the data. Here, I just push it on the stream. Can anybody spark the bug here? This one is tricky. I think at least, and this is where I got really sad. Um, basically, every time you emit, and this is not only about streams, every time you emit, you're basically telling Node, hey, run some other function I don't control, right? So the handshake event can have side effects because somebody might listen to that event and do all kinds of things. So we actually noticed this, and this, this is going to sound trivial in a second, but we noticed this because we had bugs that was like, you know, we had some weird stream errors coming out of this, and we were like, so weird. And th basically, it turns out that we had some path code path where when Handshake emitted, something was wrong, and somebody would call stream destroy, be like, this stream is wrong. Like, the Handshake data looks wrong. I'm going to destroy it. So when the code comes back from executing that Handshake function uh, event, uh, the stream might be in a completely different state, right? Because there's a huge state machine. So every time you emit an event or every time you call any function, you got to recheck all your conditions. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. Um, because every all of stream, if you destroy the stream in between, the push is going to fail for, for errors. And it's really fun because um, I get so many issues on my streams repos with people um, telling me that I have bugs in like five line modules because of this, because they forget to check the conditions. So this, this will fail, and it'll give you an error, and they'll be like, it's your fault. And I'll be like, it's probably not. And I'm telling you, it's like, you know, I've had some of the best people from Google make issues with this. Uh, and it's just because it's really hard. So how do you fix this? Uh, just add a bunch of checks. So basically, every time you do this, you got to do this. Every time you made a, a handshake, you got to check if it's destroyed after. If it's destroyed after, you probably just want to return. Uh, or you know, do something because that means that some uh, code path has handled the thing. <coughs> yeah. So like I said, every time you emit anything or call any function, you gotta recheck your entire public state, which is usually just that destroy logic. Um, right. Whew. Um, that was just my favorite top five, but that's probably like 20 of these. Um, yeah, it's like, I have no advice for you. You got to read the ne uh, stream source code. That's the only way to get smart on this. And it's like, I know this is like the most privileged fucking thing to say, but it's like, it's just the truth. The documentation is great. It's way better than it was like five years ago, um, or even one year ago. But it's like, there's so many nuances to this that the only way to understand what's actually happening is by reading the source. And the source is, you know, it's complicated. But, you know, if you're d dealing with streams, the investment is worth it. That's just how it is. <coughs> so I'm going to, you know, enter my epilogue now. So a little bit about the future. Um, you know, we're working on Streams 4. After Stream 4, we'll probably have 5. So I was like, I'm making this new thing. I'm just going to call it Streams X because, like, you know, 10 is the best one. Uh, so I made this new module called Stream X. Um, I've been working on it for like a couple of months, but I've, I managed to finish it, uh, publish it yesterday. Um, it's basically just like an iteration of core streams, but the focus uh, on the on the on the implementer, so making it easier for the implementer of streams to 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 work with this. Um, 
before anybody else at me that uh, we should just do this in node core we are working on all this stuff in node core which again is just way harder because uh, backwards compat <laughs> um, so it's much easier to iterate outside but uh, basically um, that makes streams easier to implement you have to worry about less things so it has a pipe method that does proper error handling. Yay! Uh, it has what's what I call proper lifecycle support. Uh, I'll talk about what that means in a little sec. It actually has pretty good backwards compat. So the stream X module uh, gives you a lot of help with implementing these things, but um, it also gives you like 95% backwards compatible with Node, which is probably what you want because you're probably not interested in the last 5% that we as core developers are because that's where all the crazy things come out. So, so it's it's it's, it's pretty good. Um, <coughs> it kind of like lets you do stuff like this. So this is an example of a, uh, what I would call like a production use case of a, how you implement a. a, a, a uh, file st uh, write stream in uh, with StreamX, so it gives you this these two handlers that are new: an open handler and a destroy handler. We have the destroy handler in Node, but this is a little bit different. So open handler is basically just a function that's called before any kind of write operation happens or read operation happens uh, behind the scenes. So that's where you can open your resources. We don't have that in streams right now, which is a lot of where a lot of the complexity is about because then you you gotta open when you first write, and it's like all the state machine. Um, then it has a very simple write function uh, that kind of behaves like you expect. You get some data, you got to write it, you call a callback. Um, and then it has a destroy hook. And the destroy hook is always called at, as the last thing of the stream. So whenever you're done with the uh, stream, like finish as emitted, um, it calls your destroy logic. So that's where you clean up. So you get this very clean state machine compared to how you do node, node streams. And as part of th this cleanup, the close event is always part of the last event that happens on your stream, so you can always just listen for close. You don't need to ra uh, run a thousand modules. Um, so it's pretty nice. Uh, and it's, it seems to be working quite well so far uh, in, the, in, in, in my internal projects. Um, so happy to get some feedback on it. That's basically it. Um, I won't bore you anymore. Um, come talk to me if you want to hear any more like stream war stories. I have a lot. Thank you.